Welcome to Soil Structure Software. This is demonstration of our new drill pier software. You can put your company information here at the top. Organization name, project name, engineers who designed it, the job number and the date. If you want, you can import and put your logo. So uh, this program does axial capacity, lateral capacity, and reinforcement design. The units can be either in English units or SI units. Uh, let's work in English units for this example. The top of pier can be a free-headed drill pier or a fixed head. It's uh, conservative to assume free head. We can use fixed head if we embed the drill pier inside a pile cap at least 18 inches. So in this example, we have the pier length is 18 feet. Pier diameter is 2 foot. The groundwater uh, depth is 5 feet below the ground surface. And we decided to ignore the skin friction in the upper 3 feet and in the lower 3 feet. Um, in the shaft type, you can either have vertical. And you can see it would be vertical over here when you open it up. Or you can decide to have a bell pier, in which case you'd say bell. And that you could see it's, it's belled here. Okay, so let's go back to vertical. As far as the loads, you put your lateral load. In this case, uh, we have a shear of 8 caps, 0 moment. Vertical downward load is 40 caps. Vertical uplift load is 10 caps. Uh, no torsional moment. And we're allowed 0 0.25, quarter inch uh, lateral deflection. Passive wedge, uh, <coughs> this is a value that ranges between 2 and 3. Um, so let's say we have 2.5 uh, skin friction we're using factor of safety against skin friction of 2.0 and bearing let's change that to also 2.0 torsional moment but since we have zero torsion it really this doesn't matter leave it at 3.3 concrete compressive strength let's say it's 3500 and in this case we're saying 50% crack it's right there it, it can either be uncracked or let's say 50% crack. Then you come down to the geotechnical properties. You, we picked in this layer, it's a granular soil, and according to USCS classification system, it's silty sand, and its consistency is loose. Layer thickness is five feet, and this is the lateral subgrade modulus. If you want to know what's the range, if you put one and try to get out of it, it will tell you right there that it's between 70 and 130. So let's go back to our 90 and then we increase it um, linearly as you go down with depth. So it starts at 90 at 0 and goes to 110 at 5 foot depth. Kp, that's the passive earth pressure coefficient, it's 2.8 and we're using 1.33 factor of safety on top of that so that uh, we're using allowable passive. Uh, and this is what goes into calculation for your lateral load analysis. Uh, beta, this is only used for if you have torsional moment and skin friction. If you click on that, the program will display the meaningful ultimate, uh, ultimate uh, skin friction values. So uh, in this case, for silty sand, that's loose. It's between 250 and 900 PSF. We decided to use the lower range, which is 250. Cohesion, <coughs> um, in this case, there is enough cell, enough apparent cohesion that the uh, test showed 300 PSF, so 0 0.3 KSF. Unit weight, let's change that to 110, and friction angle of 27 is reasonable. Then you go down the bar, now you go to the second layer. The same thing, uh, except we're going to change the unit weight to 110 also and so on and so forth and you go down with that and it looks like all the unit weights have to be changed to 110 or 115 in that area in that range okay then once you get done you say calculate results and then file is not saved let's save it okay so when you save remember that we had if we go back we had 40 kips axial and 8 kips lateral and 10 kips up left. When you go to results, it will tell you that uh, you put here your 40 caps and the computed settlement is 0 
one inch. So if you want to go with one third of an inch allowable, uh, vertical settlement, the point one inch would be okay. However, we have a problem here. Uh, remember, you need 40 caps, but the result is only showing you it's in reduced load, which means here it's allowable downward capacity is only 38.8. So we go back to analysis and we increase the pier length. Let's try uh, 20 feet and then say calculate result, save it and it's 39.5 it's not doing it so let's go 22 feet and then say calculate result yes okay now it's doing it 40.1 you need 40 so that's fine the deflection is uh, the vertical settlement is only 0.09 inch if you want to see the uh, lateral capacity it's 0.13 and we, we need to be let's go back we only need to be 0.25 inches so uh, 0.13 is all right. Then maximum moment is 19.6 kept foot at five and a half feet below ground. If you want to see more details, you can look at the lateral table and go down all the way to the 41 mode. Um, or if you want to see it as a chart, you can say view or lateral graphs. And there <coughs> you could see the shear with depth. And if you hover around, let's say at five feet, I want to know what's going on then right there it tells you look at this area so if you go to five feet it, it says shear is 0.83 caps uh, if you want to look at moment it's 19.4 kip foot if you want to look at deflection at five feet it's 0.25 inch and here is something very important okay? which is that uh, your lateral pressures uh, for laterally loaded drill pier they're very high at the top and then they increase to nothing as you go down well this is the blue this is induced lateral pressure and these green values are the available strength of the capacity so as you could see you have a depth of zero 2.18 ksf allowable lateral pressure and induced is only 0 0.99 so you're putting one ksf pressure at the top but you have up to 2.18 so you are right uh, and then you can look at the reinforcement. In this case, we chose 60 KSI steel, and we had number six, we had 10 of them. Ties, let's go to number four ties, and let's say the clay cover is three inches, and based on that, it's saying you can use up to 12 inch uh, lateral uh, spacing. So let's go to nine. Six will be too little. So we can go nine, and your reinforcement is not up to 1% yet, but you don't have to be 1% unless you have highly expensive soil. And then um, the program um, takes the maximum moment from lateral analysis, multiplies it by 1.6. So you have PU, or MU, you have 31 kip foot, PU was 40, and then you multiply that by 1.2, so you get 48. You can adjust that. So if you want to go 50, you can do that here. Uh, and then uh, TU, we have no torsion, and shear, uh, we have the maximum shear, if you go back, is 19.6. So it takes that 19.6, uh, you multiply by 1.2, and let's say it's 25, okay? and you can put the actual number. Then you hit uh, uh, calculate results, save it again, and then look into reinforcement. Everything's fine. Moment capacity is 16%. Torsional moment capacity is zero, shear capacity is 61 percent, and torsion and shear is nine percent. So uh, let's try to reduce the number of bars. Let's say now we need eight bars. Okay, and let's recalculate. Say yes, and let's look at reinforcement. Okay, so that's a little bit better, and it's about three quarter of a percent vertical steel. Okay, and uh, when you're done. Uh, you can look at the structural capacity and the geotechnical capacity. So, structural capacity axial compression is 804 kips, but geotechnical will govern. It's only 40 kips. You can put up to 40 kips for that drill pier. Tension is 50% of that. It's 20 kips, and it's smaller than the tension for uh, column design for the structural capacity. Um, torsional moment, you're allowed up to 34.1, uh, 
but in the technical capacity of torsion is 75.6 so the 34.1 will cover okay. and when you're ready to uh, print you hit print and you can uh, hit setup here and you can go to uh, PDF and uh, say photo printer hit OK and then it will compile all the pages and uh, it will it will bring a uh, uh, the whole thing up in a PDF format and then when you open it that's what it looks like okay uh, you go down and then you can print it in uh, into you can save it as a PDF uh, or print it it's uh, whatever you decide okay I hope you uh, understand the capabilities or oh, one other thing if you do have negative skin friction you can go back let's say in the uh, let's say in the top soil and instead of being granular soil the upper five feet let's say that was cohesive soil okay and it's uh, CL and let's say it's soft okay anytime you choose soft or very soft the program will automatically recognize there is possibility that there will be negative skin friction or down drag however if you as the engineer of record to decide that there is no negative skin friction possible then you take it off but if you do you can leave it on and then say calculate result and let's not save it and then now you can look at the results and you you have uh, the capacity obviously it's not decreased but you would be able uh, you'll have a higher axial load because of that drag force and there are your results everything else as long as you don't see any red the your dimensions are fine well i hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, lecture and if you have any questions get a hold of us at sales at soilstructure.com thank you